Okay, it's working. That would have been handy a few hours ago. Woo! Got four people on, which I'm probably one of those. Not much notice for this one, though. Hopefully you're all having a good Sunday. It's good weather down here. Um, had a really good spot for my live feed earlier. Yeah, been waiting since 11. Yep, haven't we all? Yeah, I, um, I was trying just away from the house. There's a spot, like a little gully, I don't know, like 100 metres from here. So just a little bit too far to run power lead. So I went and took battery, inverter, had everything hooked up, reset the, had to get my laptop, had to download all the software on that. And everything was working except for it kept coming up with an error message between the modem and the actual dish on Starlink. It just kept saying it was unplugged. So I'm not sure why it was saying that, whether I was supposed to recalibrate or something. But anyway, I just gave up. I'll try it again another day, just not on a live feed. I'll just try it with a couple of people. And then if it works, I'll do it on live feed because I've got a few good spots around. Um, I was going to go outside just out in front of the house. There's a creek. Uh, but it's pretty windy here, actually, so I didn't want all that noise in there. Um, yeah, I'll try a few outside. As I said, I'll just try them with people video chatting, and then if that works all right, I'll um, do a proper setup. I saw Phil before. Uh, he saw the, um, the status there, the post, so it'd be great if he wanted to join in or if anyone wants to join in. If you want to join in on StreamYard, it's you just log in via your Google. We can make your own account. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I send you the link, which the link's already on there in the chat. And then you click that, you come in, and I just put you up on the stage. Well, that's what they call it on the screen. So even if you're someone who I don't know, or if it's someone who's never been on one before, feel free to do it. It's a good opportunity when there's not many. Hey, Lukey Reed. What are you up to on this Sunday? Starting to cool off here. We've just lost our daylight savings. So extra hour of daylight that we don't have anymore. I'm just joking. Um, but yeah, they're starting to cool off here. And I've noticed that because uh, next weekend I'm going away camping at this stage, weather permitting, etc. And it's um, the place we're going to, which is still like it's only a few hours away, has lows of fours and fives this week. So it changes pretty quick. It wasn't that long ago. It was hot as hot and humid and now it quickly changes. And saying that, like today, the sun's still out. If you go outside, it's warm enough. Um, and like he's saying there, great weather here after Noah's Ark weather Friday. We got a bit of rain. I'm not sure what our total was. It was less than 100. And the creek was just trickling through and it's got a good flow now, but it's like I can still get a little car through. Um but it, like in certain spots, it hadn't hasn't been running like over causeways. I don't know. Easily six months, if not maybe a year, and now it's flowing over them, so that's good. Um, so yeah, as, one thing I found interesting on the um, SES page because I followed it a couple of years ago with all those floods, and they're pumping out all these notifications everywhere, all over Facebook on the local notice board, etc. Flood warning. Oh, it's only a minor flood warning. It's going to be 0.75 metres. Why even bother putting that out? So just as... So 0.75 and the minor flood alert is 3 metres. Um, that's, that's at one spot. For us to flood badly in Singleton, for it to start to affect anyone, it needs to be 11 metres. So I don't know. Bit of an over exaggeration obviously there's flooding down south Wollongong had some bad flooding and um winds of it winds are always floods yeah driven through some puddles deeper than that yeah um we're definitely going to see worse flooding uh it's one thing uh like looking at houses and all these new housing developments going up and Where's the water got to go? There's nothing to soak any of this water up. It just runs off everything. So, of course, we're going to get up with bigger floods because in the past, the water wouldn't either get to the creeks or the rivers 
or it wouldn't get there as quick. Whereas now, just running off tarmac, boom, straight in. I was at Sydney on Thursday, Friday, so during the heavy rain. And, yeah, like there's some spots there you couldn't cross the streets. Um, some lanes were closed. Buses would go past and put it all over the um, sidewalk or path, whatever you want to call it. Um, but where in Sydney has water got to go? Like where's what's going to soak any of that up besides it going down the drain? There's nothing. And even then, like some of their parks are so crap that it just straight off the top of it. So what do you expect? Like you'd only need 20 mil there if it was heavy enough and it'd feel like it's flooding. But anyway, it's good that we got it um, just before we go into autumn and then winter because they usually say sort of like April, end of April is sort of the end of your growing season like for whatever, for the cattle, etc. So it's good that we got it. We'll still get a little bit of sunshine. Things will be growing. Then the creeks should be flowing all the way through winter. Uh, even if it's only, if we don't get any rain, it might go down to a trickle or whatever, or springs might open. But um, it basically means winter's fine. And, uh, it'll be when we get through to spring. Uh, Sydney was poorly planned, hence the traffic situation. Yeah, shit. I've got a bit of news later on Sydney, actually. Just one second. I'm just, just checking any notifications that pop up in case someone wants to join in. You can join in on your phone too. You don't have to have a really good phone or a good um, camera or anything. Um, like my... Uh, stream keeps freezing through my camera, so doesn't matter. Now, I've got nine on, so there's a few joining on. Um, feel free to get in the chat or join in. Didn't really have much that I was going to talk about. There's some things I'd like to do a live feed on, but I uh, don't know whether many people will be that interested in it. It's just more of like a life update and what's going on at the moment which I'll tell a little bit later, but I won't get into the details. Otherwise, people will get the shits with it and I'll get the shits with it too. Um, so this weekend, I'm we're possibly doing a family camping trip. We're looking at going down the bridal track area. Uh, a lot of it's already fully booked. Who knows what it's going to be like after the rain because they've had a lot of rain. Um, but the weather looks like it should be good next weekend. So we'll wait and see. I won't do any videos or anything. I'll just put a few photos and that up. Uh, and then I go in straight into, so this is my last week of work. And then I've got the two weeks of holidays. So I'm not sure yet what I'm doing in the holidays, whether I'm just doing house hunting or I'm half thinking about doing a trip up the, probably the North Coast, up to Queensland somewhere. Don't know, make it up. Have been looking at caravans as well, just older ones, which I'll show you later. I've got a few there saved to show and you give me your opinion. And um, obviously that's more money that I don't need to be spending, but I'm also kind of like, oh, well, fuck it. Um, Lenny, I was up at Linga Longa last week. Uh, did you go with friends, family? Oh, you're from there, that's right. What do you think of it? I've had both good and bad experiences there. Like when I say bad, it's just like, oh, that was a bit underwhelming. Like the place itself, I think, looks really cool. Um, the food, I, it's a little bit pricey, but then I guess everything's getting a bit pricey. And as soon as you start to go to a nicer pub or something, that's what happens. I just loved it because they had Guinness on tap, whereas uh, I think last time I stopped there a couple of years ago, they didn't. So that was really good. I only had like an entree there this time. It was all right. Nothing well, but it was all right. Anyway, I'll show you a couple of things. I haven't done share screen before, so this could be interesting. Um, one moment where I find it. There we go. Then you get to meet you at Legends for Charity Camp. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a moment. There's, mate, I might not be able to make it anymore. I'll find out soon. Um, where are we? 
share screen. So a couple of weeks ago, because uh, one of my cars is completely uh, <laughs> buggered, so I end up getting this, which is just a it's 2017 uh, Workmate Hilux, uh, 2.7 litre petrol. Um, I tell you what really pissed me off about it. So it was about 20 grand, and then to get insurance and stamp duty was a bit over. It was like 2,200 dollars. Like, it's just bullshit, isn't it? Like, for something that's 20 grand, then you got to spend an extra 10% just on on that crap. Especially stamp duty. Stamp duty is really pissing me off at the moment, especially when it comes to housing. It's like, here, take all my money for nothing. Um, I kind of wish sometimes stamp duty wasn't a percentage. It was just like, all right, here's the admin fee to transfer your registration. It costs $200 regardless of how expensive your vehicle is. Because once again, it's one of those classic things. If you've got plenty of money, it doesn't affect you. But if you're struggling, yep, it does. Uh, anyway, so I got this uh, partly because I don't need extra seats at this stage. And if I am going to move house soon or if I was, because some of the houses I'm looking at would be like a reno job, I sort of thought, well, that would come in handy. Not the, I used to have a couple of the older ones, like the 2000 models, um, and I actually preferred them much more than this. It's still okay, but there's a few things I really don't like about it, but it is what it is. Um, I guess that's what you get when you're getting a base model. Um, anyway, still no better on power and fuel than the old one. Probably the same engine. Oops, that's the next one I was gonna show. Um, Yeah, Luke, he's coming now. Oh, is he going on Bucks plot though? Yep, good question. Uh, that's a joke. I have a Zuzu registered in company name. They bend me over every. Yeah, it's just stupid. It just it's there's too many things where you just have to pay so much stupid money for nothing. So the houses I'm looking at, thirty. I'm looking at thirty thousand dollars in stamp duty. It doesn't do anything for me. It's just here. Take thirty. Take three years of my savings just for nothing. So I've just basically sell few of my, you know, assets off just to cover stamp duty. It doesn't go towards the house. It's just here. Have money. It's just bullshit. Once again, if you're wealthy, it doesn't affect you. But if you're like me, where you're pushing shit uphill, it's just another fucking stab in the heart from the government. Uh, so one thing I'm thinking about doing, which I don't have long left, is in the holidays if I go up north, maybe getting a small caravan to go up. Uh, part of the reason I'm looking at caravans and not just like pulling up somewhere camping is I kind of like the idea if I've got a caravan on the back, even though it's not ideal, but I can just pull into a rest stop and just sleep there. Um like not all the time, but like if I did that every second night or whatever, well, it saves a bit of money, especially with how much fuel in it. Fuel's $2.33 here in Singleton, which is bullshit. It's 50 cents dearer than what it is a town that's less than half an hour away. That's that's price gouging. Anyway, so these are some of the, um, the caravans that I'm looking at here. Um, I'm sort of looking at 16, 17, 18 foot. Uh, any bigger than that, they're getting too heavy because I want a tear that's really less than 1350 because then you've got to still put things in them. Um, plus, I've got the ute, which I can put a lot of weight on and then transfer it across. I ideally just want a bed where I can I pull up, have a sleep for a bit. Hey, Jack, thanks for joining in. I was just saying I was looking at some caravans here. Um, so this is one here, Jayco, uh, my grandparents used to have one similar to this. I know they're nothing special, but under 12 grand. Um, I'll just go through some of the photos. I have no real preference between pop top and not because uh, they've both got pros and cons. Like I love the idea that if it's not a pop top, it's more stealthy that you, if you're sleeping in it. Um, but one thing I've noticed going through a 
few caravans, if it's pop top, the airflow's heaps better. Also, storage is a lot easier. And it's less drag when you're towing behind. Uh, Aircon is one of those things that I'd like to have, which some of these have. Lovely decor. Mm, that's a good era right there. Uh, I'm ideally looking for a single, sorry, not a single bed, but a island bed, like a queen or a... Doubles are too small, and I know that caravan mattresses are a different size altogether. Hey, Freddie, thanks for joining in. Um, caravan is a good idea. Don't know how much it is in the caravan park. Yeah, let's... The problem is when I have my breaks, it's always school holidays, which means everything is always double the price. So in January, I stayed at just a swag on, a, um, on grass, no power. The... Uh, it was only like half full, the caravan park, $65 just for that. It wasn't a big four, like where they have all the traction sort of stuff for kids either. Um, it's just ridiculous. And that's why I'm like, well, geez, it'd be handy to be able to just pull up and you can't just, oh, I'll just pull up on the side of the road and put my swag out. I probably could on the back of the ute, to be honest, but that's a bit weird. Um, but I've also, this is a, a backup plan potentially a caravan for something else i've got in mind anyway so i'm looking at a queen bed but i have seen that some where they've got single beds they'll just put a a queen bed going sideways across them like it's not that hard to change it um i just don't after having bigger beds i just find it too hard to go back to a single the only other reason it'd be good to have a single maybe is i could set up a bit of an office thing on the other side uh, I ideally don't really want much of a kitchen inside because I would just take like a Weber or something like that, do it outside. And once again, with a fridge, I would take an extra fridge in the U if I wanted a fridge freeze or whatever. Anyway, so that's one option. It is... Oh, it doesn't say it's tear, that one. So that's one, then... Similar again. I don't know much about brands when it comes to it. I know a bit about the newer ones. I don't know around the 2000s, you know, what's a better brand over another. Um, stealth camping would be hard in a van. <laughs> I'd definitely have to um, hitch it up to the ute with a lock, a few padlocks, I reckon. Otherwise, they might steal me as well. Ah, oh, well, if they've got money and they're good looking, they can go for it. So quite a few wins has come up at a decent price. Get to the inside ones. So this is probably a more of the sort of setup I'm after. I like the ones that only have the grill type thing because I I wouldn't use that at all. Um, stove top even so I that'd be something I'd look to be getting rid of and you'd probably just run a what are they called a little le electric cooktop things the name induction cooktop that's i'd probably just run that um storage isn't such an issue for me because it's just me one thing i have seen is that some of these where the opposite seat is on the other side you can convert that into a bit of a either extra storage or i could convert that into a computer office setup so part of the reason i'm looking into these is that I might end up spending some time living out of a caravan. 2011 model. I find as soon as I hit over 2005, they're getting it's a lot of money. I want to spend under 20 just because that is a lot of money to spend. If I go over, I know the more you spend, the better you probably get. Um, but yeah, I'm not prepared because this might be, it might be something that just turns to shit and I go like, nah, I've got to get rid of it. And that's one thing why I'm not as bothered if I spent up to 20 grand is that like assuming it's not a complete basket case, I shouldn't lose too much money when I go to sell it. So you can see there, tear 1235, so that's good. Uh, I've got three more options to show you. This one's a bit blurry. I've looked at a few of these. I've, I sort of, um, I don't know if Caramel is a good brand or not, but I've looked at a few of them and they just seem a little bit better than some of the others. Yeah, so that one thing I've looked in, so if I was you, I'd put, have a toilet and shower in it. 
So my plan is under the island bed. I wonder. If, I'll show you a photo in a moment. I there's usually like a pull out spot. I just put a toilet there, like your cassette toilet, whatever you call it. Um, as far as a shower, all the showers that I've looked at in caravans, they're too small. Like I'm not that tall, but they're still like I don't want to be hunched over. Um, and that's a lot of extra weight than you have in the van. So what I would do is like a, those ensuite, the awning style ones, I'd have one of those on the ute. So it pulls out off that and I just shower there. Um, if I'm at a caravan park, I just shower in the amenities there. So um, has the full oven, which as I said, I'm not, it could be handy, but it's not something I really want. Like if it stopped working, I would, I'd just hoik it. I wouldn't replace it with another one. Well, these photos are a bit blurry. Yeah. All right. Two more to go. Uh, this brand, I mean, I've never heard of it. Infinity Gazelle it seems to be a common one. So if anyone knows about it, uh, I'll try and keep up with your comments a bit. Uh, resale should be sweet under 20. Yeah, that's that's my thoughts. Um, like if I lost, say you lost a $1,000, over six months or whatever. Well, that's whatever. That's part of the reason I bought that ute is because uh, the re you don't lose a lot of value on them. So each year, you depending on K's and that, you're losing five hundred to a thousand dollars. I'm like, well, that's not much in, when you're looking at cars. Uh, will I be in one spot or traveling with it? Also, okay, good question. Um, when I'm traveling, I wouldn't stay in one spot twice so my plan was to go up the east coast um like probably go up pacific and down new england or vice versa um and then just stay i, I might there might be some people i know or whatever or through different communities and i can just stay there um but i just want to have my own space if i do stay at someone's place like i'd sooner just pull up and stay in the caravan in their yard or driveway rather than in the house just because I just want to have my own space. Um, but then I could end up living in it for up to six months. And if that was the case, because I was looking at like a shipping container doing like a little tiny house shipping container thing, real basic. And then I thought, well, the resale and that's pretty crap. Whereas if I have a caravan, I can have it there when I want to go. I just hitch it up, take it away. Or if someone else wants to borrow it in the family, they can do that too. Uh, I would go that way. Which way were you talking about then? Sorry. This is what happens when I don't read for a bit. Um, my mate in South Australia has one of those gazelles from memory. Yeah, so 12-volt system. Uh, I've already got everything ready to go for, to put a 12-volt system in. Um, so, and like a lot of the caravans that I've looked at that they like, if they already have a 12 volt system in there, can you guys let me know? Cause like, I know the camera keeps cutting out, but does my, uh, voice cut out as well? Cause I don't want to be talking. Then it cuts out and you're only hearing half of what I'm saying. Best way to be to stay in your own van instead of the house. Yeah, true. Um, anyway, so I'll just flick through this one. There's a couple of these around at the moment, not far from where I am for this sort of similar money. Okay, voice is good. Thanks. So I know that if the camera freezes, it's good to keep going. Oh, the other thing too that I've noticed with some... When they've got the door at the rear, they sort of bottom out a bit. Uh, so where I live at the moment, like there's quite a few causeways where it, it can be a bit rough. So I'm not after like an off-road van, but something with a bit of clearance. And I know you can change all that, but I, I don't want to change that. I just want to buy something that's ready to go. So if the door's towards the front, that's better. <laughs> One thing, I can you guys see my cursor as well? So like when I'm pointing to things. Um, 
it's funny in some of the vans though they've got some really stupid storage ideas i'm like oh that's so dumb and like one of the ones i've seen is and this is even in ensuite vans well actually it's only in ensuite vans just here in the corner they put a little sink i'm like why why would you do that you've already got a sink in the kitchen why would you put a sink just there that's dumb anyway um so here's another one there's a few around this is the sort of layout i like one thing i will get your opinion for those people that um have had a caravan so a lot of it there's the roof mounted air cons and then there's like the square ones that are like similar to a microwave size one which uh i think i prefer because then i don't have something on the roof especially on a pop top um but one thing I've noticed is that some of them have the air con right next to, say, where the microwave is in this one at the front pointing straight out the door. And I just, whereas some of them have it above the bed head, I'm like, that'd be a better spot. Um, or in towards the middle of the van. I just don't love the idea that, like, that's there going straight out. I know you probably have the van fully closed if you had the air con on, blah, blah, blah. But it just seems a bit silly that it's pointing straight at the door. Um just bought my first ever lithium item. I got a 200 um, amp hour Kings, which fingers crossed I don't have the issues that other people have. If I had my time, well, if I knew I was definitely going into this, I'd buy a better brand. But I wasn't prepared to spend heaps of money when I didn't know if I was going to be using it that much. And who knows, it might be one of those things that I actually don't need lithium or want it. Or I don't need 200, I only need... The reason I got 200 is because if I wanted to run induction, I knew that I had plenty. There was other reasons too. So, um, hey, Rob Zom. Remember, if any of you want to join in, I've got the link at the top. You just have to click on that, or you can let me know and I can resend the link. Hey, Wixie. Hey, um, back home, I think. Wixie's had a good trip um, away over to Port. Um, yeah. Good to get you on one day, Wixie. Maybe the night. Maybe you have a few. Um, companion two. All right. Just going to go through a couple more, and then I've got one last van I want to show you, and then I want you to give me your thoughts, if you can remember. See how this one's got the air con above the bed? Uh, the one that my grandparents used to have had that, and that was much better because you could just, if you're laying in bed, you just angle it down on yourself. Most of them have this setup, which once again, I would, some of them have that as already storage, which would be good, but then this could also be good that I could just take those cushions off and put something over it. Because like, if I'm going to lay down, I'm going to lay on the bed. If I'm going to sit down, it's just me there, or I sit outside. Once again, full oven. That can go, it's not worth it. I reckon they must draw a bit of power, those old ones though, just the same. And look, I won't, just here's that spot I was talking about. See where they've got this um, door there. You can put a little slide, or well, some put them on a the slide, otherwise you can just shuffle it out or whatever. A lot of people just put a toilet there, you pull it out, push it back in. It seems like it makes sense to me. I wouldn't really put much under there. I would not be taking, like, because some of them have the, the full-on awning. Hell no, not taking that. That's a pain to set up, and it's heavy as. Um, I wouldn't do that. If anything, if I was going to start doing that sort of stuff, I'd just get, like, one of those shady gear walls or something like that and pull it down. Microwave would be handy, but once again, you can do whatever with that. All right, last one, and then this is the oh, this caravan. I'd love to get something like it that would need a full reno, but I thought because then it like you obviously can set it up exactly the way you want it. Then, which how I would set it up would be different to how all these vans have done. This um oh, and the other reason I haven't got an older van to do up yet is because like, well, what if I actually don't like caravans? Like, I've never, what if I don't like towing them? What if I don't like living in? So I sort of thought this could be a good test. And then if it turns out I do like it, then I could build my own from scratch or I can get an older one and reno it. I'm just going to check the comments before I go on to that one. Um, 
Companion Rover, 40 amp lithium. Oh, is that one of those power pack ones you're talking about there, Mark? Yeah, the seats are, are really nice back in the, the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, Freddie, I have been checking. The ones when I've gone and had a look at, I've been checking for leaks, like all around. Um, I found just as many uh, hard tops, if that's what you call them, uh, that have had leaks in the roof than pop tops, just from what I can see on the market. Uh, I wouldn't really be going on gravel roads. Like, oh, I, I definitely wouldn't be really going on gravel roads. If I was, it'd be very short stints. Uh, and I would also, if I got a pop top, I would get those um, twist extending bars that you put in the corner so it wasn't just sitting on the, the scissor pieces. Um, all right, here we go. This is the last one. Cheaper. Not as practical. But damn, looks cool. Mmm. Um, hey. It's probably not as bad inside uh, appearance-wise than some of the others. Once again, like I'm not after a big kitchen on the inside. And the older vans are heaps lighter, which I like. Uh, and I'm not after a big kitchen or anything on the inside. And any of this at some point would get probably ripped out. Or if I did my own, I'd do a different thing. Uh, once again, I would be turn putting a bed across that and make that a double queen. And if there's enough width across the van i'd put it that way um and then you've got all that i'll just put like a drawer or put a couple of tubs on wheels or something i don't need a lot of storage for clothes i don't hang a lot of my stuff i just fold it or chuck it so um like realistically those seats are probably no worse than i don't know what the footage on this one is it looks a bit smaller so it's tear weight's 960. So you know, every couple hundred kilos makes a difference. Mmm, that's fine right there. Yep. I don't know. I just like, and there's better one, better looking old ones than this one as well. But I, one thing I don't like are the real short draw bars on the old ones. Um, which you know, if I was going to do an older van Renault rebuild, I'd probably do a whole new chassis through it, make a Extend the drawbar. Anyway, I kind of like, I know it's not as practical and everything, but I kind of like the idea of that older van. Like, at least it looks cool. Um, all right. Oh, good. Thanks, Jack, for stopping by. Uh, I probably won't be much longer. I can hear BG's playing in that van. <laughs> I might get the wrong attention. Trying to pick up on the road and, mm, maybe that's the problem. I don't know. I definitely have to change a few things to make it a bit more modern. Anyway, they're sort of my thoughts. What do you think? Single axle, dual axle. Should I go for a certain one of those brands? Um, I know that a lot of people say not pop tops but I personally don't care. Uh, the only, like, there's pros and cons both ways. So I'm just, whatever, whatever. Um, as I said, I've got a ute that's empty. It's rated for a lot of weight and it will be empty. So any extra weight or storage can go on the back of the ute. So I'm not bothered there. Cougarville. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, well, desperate times, hey. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing those cupboards too. Um, if I got something like that one, I wouldn't like. It still have to be good enough that I can still just take it away as is. Like, all right, maybe if I had to buy a mattress to go across the two single beds or something like that, I'm cool with that. I don't mind the idea of having a different mattress. I don't mind having to spend a a little bit of money to just change a couple of little things. Um, like, let's say the fridge is really crap. Well, I just pull it out. Um, I'll just put a King's one in or something, you know. Um, or I just use the fridges I've got and make do. So 
So I'm not I'm not too worried. I like I'd probably be happy to spend up to a thousand dollars on doing little changes or fixes on one. Obviously, depending on how much it is, etc. Like let's say it needed new tires. I'm like sure, whatever. I do that. I'm done. Okay, Ute rating. So I'm fairly certain the Ute that I have is rated to tow 2.5 tons. In saying that, I don't want to pull 2.5 tons behind it. Um, I would like to stick to 1.5 at the most on the van. That includes what I put in it. Extra weight I can put in the back of the ute because like otherwise like no point having a heavy van and then the ute which is rated for heaps is got hardly anything on it. Plus it will make it ride a bit better. It's one thing the front suspension is great on the ute, back suspension with no load crap. Um yeah, leaf springs. Front coil. Mm, nice. Um, the single axle ones you're looking at only have a small payload, 250. Do you mean like that's all you can put in at 250 kilos worth of stuff? Um, I'm not worried about putting toolboxes and things like on the front or the back. Uh, obviously, a gas bottle, one or two gas bottles in the front would be handy. Yes, you need to start also probably looking at a bit of water. But if I don't have a ensuite, the only really water I would have is in the sink. I could probably get away with a jerry can, to be honest, and it can go in the ute. Um, kilometres. I only have a small pallet. I mean kilograms, no? Confuse. Yeah, I think you meant kilograms. Um, yeah, so like 1.5, I think if I could keep it to that or less, I'd be good. Um, I don't mind towing that because that just puts me well within my limits. Uh, what I would have on the back of the ute would be at least one toolbox, like a bigger toolbox for putting stuff in, maybe even two toolboxes. Um, and then maybe a little bit of other gear, etc. Because I don't really have storage in the ute as such, it'd be just like a backpack sort of thing. Um, yeah, my iPad keep it, uh, keeps changing that. I hate that. Mine keeps on my phone, every time I type in I, it changes it to U, like the letter U. I'm like, stop doing that, I don't use that. Yeah. So anyway, there are a few things to think about. I know realistically the older van that I've currently got on the screen is um, not going to be as good to live out of. Um, like if I had to live out of it for six months, that wouldn't be as ideal. If I did that, I would probably do a bit of a reno job on the inside and update it to how I'd want it. Otherwise, that might be when I build a, a carport off the side of it with the extra money um, or, or get a shipping container and just deck the shipping container out for like five grand or whatever and make that my office and storage for all my other stuff. All my cooking that I do would be air fryer, butane cooker or Weber barbecue. Um, I could boil a little bit on an electric um, induction cooker, but that doesn't bother me either way because I can just use butane and I'm happy to do that. I don't, my cooking's pretty easy these days. I don't really need an oven. I don't use an oven for much because you've got an air fryer. Anyway, I'll get rid of that. Oh, I'll just quickly show you where I'm planning on going this weekend and then I'll get off. And So this is where we're potentially looking down around the Cavity National Park. Safala Hill End Bridal Track. So just depends on a few things still, but that's the plans for this weekend or next weekend rather. All right. I will stop showing you that. Uh, it's 10 past three. So I'm definitely going to wrap up by 
If anyone wants to join in, let me know. I'll put the link up again. There you go. Even if you just want to join, jump in, and if you don't like it or whatever, you can jump back out. All right, personally, I would get early 2000s for under 20K for reset. Yeah, that's one thing I thought too. And then maybe I could suss out whether I, um, if I like, like Caravan. And I guess I could even suss out the size a bit. Like if I went, like maybe I'm better off going sort of the 18 foot goal, it's slightly bigger. I'm I kind of think in a dual axle just because it's slightly bigger. If I've got a blowout, I'm not losing one side. I know it will be a little bit heavier, um, but I do have a bit of leeway there. But it might be just that extra little bit better for living out of if I have to. Just a thought. Hooray for no more daylight savings. Yeah. It, I'm a, I love daylight savings, so. Mainly because I hate coming home and it's dark. Probably wouldn't matter as much up your way. Yes, I'd go that way also, Mark. All right. Well, I might... I'm having a little bit of a think. There's a few houses at the moment that I'm considering putting offers on. I'm just waiting for um, the real estate to get back to me and I've got to do the... Check where all the sewer lines and all that sort of stuff are on those properties. There's a couple there that I could put a shed in the backyard down the track, um, council approval, etc. but I've just got to make sure there's no... Sewer lines, etc. Otherwise, it's no go. All right. So, one thing um, coming up that only man every time that camera stops, it gets me at the worst spot. Unreal. Um, I only found out last week about a job potential job coming up for the second half of the year. Uh, it's a little bit more money. It's like a one-off thing. You just do a six-month stint. It's more hours, uh, working Saturdays, like one Saturday a month. But it has me travelling around the state, visiting schools. It also has me moving to Sydney. The accommodation's provided, so I don't have to worry about rent. I don't know if... The, it's like a single apartment or you're sharing with other people, whatever. But um, there's a fair chance if I end up doing that, which financially would be a good move for me, that I will not be going to the Legends um, camp up. So waiting this week to find out what they say. Oh, all good. You didn't miss much. I was just dribbling on with shit. Just talking about vans. Uh, what area are you looking to move? Oh, yeah. Um, well, it's still around the Hunter Valley. I'm looking anywhere from Brankston down to Rutherford, uh, including Head and Greeter. Newcastle's getting a little bit far and expensive. Uh, actually, well, everything in between is too expensive, but um, it's way too expensive. I would like to probably be, if I could choose anywhere, I would choose Lochinvar. There's not enough housing there and it's too expensive. Um, Rutherford puts me around better facilities and more people, which would be good. But it's also getting a bit further for work, travel. But I want to, I'm in a situation that if I buy a house, I have to rent all the rooms out. It's the only way I can afford the repayments. Uh, to do, if I did that around Brankston, Greta, possibly even Lochinvar, North Rothbury, which is like Huntley, if anyone knows where that is, I'm basically, my target is got, for rooms is going to be miners. Even though they're probably good for their money, sometimes they go home on weekends so you don't deal with them. I don't want to, I, I want to get as far away from mining as possible. Um, whereas if I go closer to like Rutherford, Head and Greta way, that's when you start to pick up like uni, stu uni students and those people, just because I'm more like-minded with those people and the better chance I have of getting along with them, better for me. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, yeah, well, I just answered that one. 
Yeah. So anyway, I hope I don't know when I'll find out about whether I'm moving to Sydney or not. But I, yeah, as I said, it, the only way I, I would be able to get out of it and go to the Legends camp up if I did that would be I'd have to do leave without pay, which I just can't afford to do that. Um, or I, it's going to be pretty hard going from Sydney all the way up Saturday morning, come back Sunday up night, like or afternoon. It's it's too much. So anyway, it is what it is. That's reality, isn't it? Uh, just a day trip. I didn't see what. Where'd you go, Rob? I didn't see that one. I would like to do, but as I said, not many people probably be interested. But I would like to do a live feed. Oh, shit, that almost was too much. On um, the housing crisis and cost of living, etc. cetera. Um, partly as an event, partly as an awareness, because I've done quite a lot of research into it and what's caused it, et cetera, and what some possible solutions would be. I'd be interested to see what your ideas would be on some of the solutions or possible solutions. Um, yeah, but it's not a good time. I'll, um, I'll just try and get the, I thought I took a couple of photos. I was trying to do a, um, well, I thought about doing a, what do you call it? a live feed from this spot on the property. I'm just going to get some photos and videos up in a moment. So just bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves or someone can join in. That'd be great. So I'm not just here talking to myself. Right. Yeah, so I tried my Starlink earlier. And it just wouldn't, um, like, not far from here, but up the paddock. But the modem wouldn't talk to the, uh, the dish. All right. Almost ready. Uh, similar to what happened just before World War One, mate. Everything skyrocketed in price, then a huge depression, then the war essentially got the world economy going. I tell you what, like some of the things that they're talking about as possible solutions, all that's going to do is fuck over people like me who are giving up nearly everything to get into the housing market. It's not going to affect the rich people. It'll help those who haven't got into the market yet, but those people that give up everything to get in, they're going to get screwed over. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the solution really is, though. Um, what's that? Nice old shed out there. At the back. Oh, yeah, good spotting. Yeah, that shed's an old slab shed. I don't know. It must be late 1800s, I guess. This house was 1895 or something like that. Um, and that... That shed's older than this. It's, it's had it though. It needs to come down. Um, all right. So I'll just share screen again. So this is um, there's a spot that we call the brush, which is like a little rainforesty part. Um, so I went up there yesterday just to have a look to see what it was like after having a little bit, bit more water. Um, so this is one of the parts here looking up. That just there in the middle where that water's coming down is actually a natural rock slide. So like if you had a bit more water there, you could actually slide down it. Um, I've given up ever hoping to own a house, mate. I've settled with knowing I'll be renting forever. My thing is, and I've thought about that, it's just that like renting around here is insane. Like, for me to have a a place to myself is, in my rent, is 50% of my wage. And that's 50% of my wage going to nothing. I know you can argue that the other way, but I just, I, I've done renting for a long time. I only bought my first house two and a half years ago. And obviously that didn't work out. But 
Um, uh, I'm not going back to renting. I just couldn't. All right. Um, make sure I'm going in the right direction. Anyway, so this is part of the, the rainforesty part. I'll just it from further back so you get an idea. If you go like 20 metres up either side of the bank, it's just normal paddock again. Really should have looked at these photos before. Oh, before putting them up. Okay, that's not really interesting. Oh, here we go. So this is the this is the first waterfall. Uh, I don't know. It's probably like a meter and a half or something. There's a big pool here, um, which you could well and truly sit in. It's got like quite a deep pool there, ground. Um, if it was a bit warmer. That'd be a good spot on a warm day. Uh, just go along. So photos don't really do it justice, unfortunately. So this is the main waterfall. It's probably five meters high, I'd say. Um, it's not a full-on waterfall where it's vertical. It has a slight lean to it, um, but we still call it a waterfall anyway. It has a fair pool at the bottom as well that you could sit. Oh, I keep getting out of it. You could sit in. Just leave it. Don't know whether you heard that or not. Anyway, so that was one spot I was hoping to do a live feed from, but I've got to sort out Starlink a bit more. I think I've got to get to a new spot and then recalibrate it. Anyway, that's something I'll do in the future. Uh, yeah, my rent is just under 500 a week, living my own. There's someone um, whose son was about to go up to Brisbane for uni. His degree is going to be $140,000. It's psychology or something like that, like it's a doctorate type thing. $140,000 hex. And then just for one room in like a three-bedroom house, $380 a week. How messed up is that? And Brisbane's not as expensive as Sydney. Yeah, <laughs> sugar mummy. Basically, the only way anyone who doesn't already own a house is ever going to get a house is if they win lotto or they've got someone rich in the family and they die or they pay them out, they buy stuff for them. So I'm still buying lotto tickets. It's the only way out. Yeah, cheers, Mark. It's one of my favourite spots. There's a few good spots where there's some good vistas and stuff on top of mountains, but that one's always been my favourite spot. Yeah, that's Dan at the moment, pretty much. Yeah. Hex is the biggest lie they could have ever told us going in. So going going into, like before going into teaching, oh, sorry, well, before you go into uni, they say Hex is, ba is interest-free, or they might have said basically interest-free. I think they said it was like, not, maybe it was like 0.5% or something. It's like interest-free. What they didn't tell you is that every time inflation goes up, there's something called indexation. So they readjust your hex. So if you had $10,000 worth of hex and then inflation goes up by 8%, they will adjust your hex by 8%. So the last two years I've paid and you, you can't nominate how much you pay like so when you earn an income above a certain amount they take uh, money out you can't then go all right so, so I'm pretty sure mine is like six percent they will take it off I can't say can you take ten percent off no they'll take six percent so in the last two years I've paid say uh, six and a half thousand to my hex they have then readjusted that by doing indexation, which is the easiest way to understand it is interest. So I paid six and a half thousand off. They then have charged me four thousand seven hundred dollars indexation. So for my six and a half thousand dollars, I've really only paid off about two to two and a half thousand. Pretty fucked up, isn't it? It actually there's a there's some stuff going around at the moment saying that. The government makes more money 
the federal government, makes more money out of HEX than it does from the mining industry. That's pretty messed up. It's bad enough that someone has to get, like you're giving up, say, on average four years without an income, really, to do this and then go on and be a taxpayer. Then you've also you've got to pay it back, plus also they're going to keep putting more money up on top of it. So, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, the government can get fucked. And I, I'm not a party person one way or the other, like Liberal, Labor, etc. But if basically... A lot of these issues we're having now goes back to John Howard, and I used to be a bit of a John Howard fan, but the more I find out, the worse it gets. During that era, that's what set the rich to be rich and the, everyone else to not be. Melbourne's actually got, had a bit of a dive, and I wonder whether it was during COVID maybe. But, yeah, Melbourne, I've looked at Melbourne. Even if you go and stay there, accommodation, like just a hotel, it's heaps cheaper. It's like half the price of Sydney. I can actually, like... To get an apartment or something down there, heaps cheaper. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but um, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Bixie. If you're ever down this way, let me know and I'll take you for a visit and we can come over camp. Biggest regret of my life going to uni? For, yeah. I'm, and I'm really pissed off because, like, obviously it was my choice, but I was only 18 and the way they. They sell it to you and everything back then. I just thought, you mongrel bastards. I tell all my students now, I'm like, except for those who are, depending on what they want to go into or if that's really what they want to go, I said, forget uni. I said, forget doing all that. Go and get a trade. Start working as soon as you can. Otherwise, you're going to be screwed like I am. The government made more money on hex repayments last financial year than they made on tax and gas companies. How is that ethical in any sense? And that's all that, if you look in the last, especially 20 years, because that's what I look at, or 30 years, all it is is let's look after the rich people and screw over the working class people. That's all it is. Um, and we see it in our, because I'm in the union, we see it with schools as well, that uh, on average public schools get 80% of what they need to, to run. So if you say 100% is what they fully need to run it properly with disabilities, staffing, et cetera, on average, public schools get 80% of what they need. Not one single private school gets less than 100%. So why would we give money, why would the government give more money to a private school, which not only has extra, um, they get extra money from businesses and that alike, they've got massive fees to get in there in the first place, for example, I'm pretty sure it was, I don't know if it was Barker College, one of the top ones in Sydney, could have been King's whatever school. They get 120% from the government of what they need to run that school. They just put in a whole new pool. So let's give a private school where they already have heaps of money. They, and when I say 120%, then they've still got their, they're paying 40, parents are paying 40 grand a year per student to go there. So they're getting even more again, but the government think let's put money in there so they can build a pool. Meanwhile, in uh, in public schools, they don't even have enough to run. It's messed up. But how many of the politicians' kids go to a public school? How many of the politicians went to a public school? And this is the problem. You got the rich looking after themselves. Uh, with Brizzy now having the Olympics, the prices will only go one way for the next five years. Well, all of Queensland, um, it's definitely going to go up because everyone's moving up there because they can't afford New South Wales. And that's where, it, if it wasn't for the fact that if I was teaching, as soon as I cross the border, my whole teaching thing changes. I basically start again and I lose my long service leave and all that sort of stuff. I'd be there in a heartbeat purely because house prices are more affordable. I can actually get a house there for what I can get a two bedroom townhouse in a, a country town here. It's just messed up. 
Uh, I'd like to buy a place, but only single wage coming in makes it hard. And see, it doesn't matter what rules they put in, people will find ways around it. But what if they said, you know what, if you're a single income or if you're, a, if you're single, you didn't have to pay stamp duty. What if they said that? Because like when I go and look at houses and I'm going around by myself and then I see there's a couple that are working, how do you compete with that? It's like you're just getting punished because you're single. Uh, and it is time that I nearly have to wrap up. King's School has 13. Yeah, I think it was the King's School. It was one of those ones. Absolute bullshit. I'd, I'd really love to meet some of these politicians one day. What is also unfair is taxing a work at such high rates on overtime hours worked when you were just working even hard. Yeah, 100%. Why should you? Why should you get taxed on that more? It's like, do you know what? If you're going to go above and beyond, good on you. Do it. Here's your reward. Don't get taxed on it. I reckon the divorce rate would skyrocket. Yeah. And see, that's what will happen. And then people will start put buying houses in their kids' names and all of that. Like, whatever you do, there's going to be loopholes around it. One, Actually, one last thing. I'll get your – I'm going to do a quick poll and then I'll head off. And um, one second. I'll have to do it on YouTube, I think, not StreamYard. Here we go. Just a yes or a no. And I'll explain it a little bit too. Don't answer straight away because otherwise you'll all answer the same way. Uh, should people be able to use their super in an offset account? Now, here are my thoughts on it. You do not have access to that super in that you can actually, like you have to take it out and you get taxed 17% or whatever it is that you do on your super. Your super stays there until retirement age. But instead of it, your super being in a super account, it's there in your bank, offsetting your interest. So the bank can still potentially use it, etc. So for those people that don't know what an offset account is, an offset account is, say you have a, a loan of $100,000 and you've got 40,000 in savings, but you don't wanna throw that 40,000 into the loan, okay? So you put it in an offset account. That way your loan repayment is 60,000 and you've always got access to that 40,000. So if you go and access 10,000 out of that, well, your loan's gonna go back up. So that's what it means by offset. So the question is, should people be able to use their super in an offset account? And for example, you pay off the house, it then must either go, it, it, you don't access that super, it has to then say go into a super fund or, or something else. Yeah, 100%. But why are we throwing why are we throwing money into the bank's pocket on interest? And obviously this could potentially put house prices up, etc. and all that. We just ignore that for now, just straight I don't agree that you should be able to get your super out. Say there's no tax to get your super out in that you get it out and then you pay it off because then Later on, come retirement, you're going to be screwed, and that will uh, that will definitely put house prices up. This is purely as an offset, and then once your offset is or your house loan is done, it must go into uh, a super until you're at retirement age or however that works. Um, so Mark reckons great idea. The banks will never agree to it. No, but why should we be giving all our money to the banks? Fuck them. They get plenty anyway. Uh, not sure about the offset account, but perhaps using it as a house deposit. Yeah, the only problem though, as soon as you take that money out to spend, you are lo you're then not going to have as much in retirement and you will, um, if everyone then had access to more money, house prices would go up because more people have more money to spend on it. Uh, that is on the card. Yeah, because this is how it started. They were actually talking about people being able to access their super for house deposits to spend on their house, which I think would screw us over. That's a short-term 
it's a little bit like um was it during COVID they said to people you can get your tax uh, your super out and i think you could get so much without being taxed on it um and but the problem is now people are going to be short come retirement anyway i'll have a look um Not let me see the one well, moment. It's not let me see the actual. I can only end it. I can't see what the results are. Um, has that idea where the government owns fifty percent of your house come in? Do you mean rent to buy? Is that what you're talking about, Freddie Boots? Because I love the idea of that too. Rent to buy. I would sooner our money, if and say even if we had to pay an interest, but it was a low interest or something rather. I'd sooner the money go back into government as much as I hate government and they can't spend money properly than into the banks. Because when it goes into the banks, it's just going into the real rich people's pockets. Any withdrawal should be limited to 20K. Well, that's something else too. Have it as just a... So for example, I've, I've been looking at paying my hex off in one hit, but then... I, it drops me below a 20% deposit, which means I have to get lenders mortgage insurance, which puts me worse off. So every way you look at it, you're screwed. Share a house with Albo scheme. Yeah, rent to buy. Do you know what? I actually think it's not a bad idea. And obviously we need to build more houses, etc. I might, I'll, I'll probably will do another live feed on this, but it'll be a lot of, I'd love to get someone on with me and there'll be a lot of me whinging about stuff. All right, I'm going to end it and we'll see. So 60% yes, 40%. Oh, it was only from five votes. So. Anyway, so it looks like we're still, still split. Obviously, you need to know more about it, and there could be pros and cons both ways. But um, we've got to do something, or well, the government has to do something. And when I say the government, it's, the thing is, it, this isn't just from one government. This is from many years of governments. So you can't expect, even though I'm not a big Albo Labor fan, but you can't expect them to sort all the problems out of the last 20, 30 years. Uh, rent to buy won't work because the person who owns the rental won't want to give up the property that would naturally be worth more at the end of the tenancy. tenancy. Yeah, it would have to be like where the government buy the property sort of thing or they... They build new houses, which are only rent to buy. You can't just buy them outright. It has to be something around it. After you pay your share out, then you start paying government back. Oh. They've got to do something. They can't just let it keep going the way it is, really. Yeah. Anyway, I said I was going to finish up at 3.30. I better finish up now. I've gone past that. Thank you very much for those people that have joined in and hung around through all my complaints. Uh, I will do another live feed soon where I'm talking more about this. And I haven't forgotten about doing um, another group chat. We've only done one. Timing hasn't been great. I've been very busy and not feeling 100% to be doing them. Um, so if you want to join in on that, um, we had five of us last time, which I think six will be our cap, not eight, because uh, even with five, it was starting to get a bit hard talking to one another. So we'll cap it at six. Uh, we'll do it again soon. I'm not sure. I'm going to talk to Rochi and Wixie about when we can do that. And then um, hopefully some of you guys can join in as well. All right. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy your earlier night because we don't have that extra hour down here. And I'll see you all very soon. All right. Thanks. Bye.